Brought to you by Lean Body, the number one protein shake in gyms across America. Hey guys, Lee Labrada here with my younger brother, Gene Labrada, coming to you live from the Houston headquarters Labrada gym. Gene is a past bodybuilding champion, winner of the NPC branch Warren, not just the master's division, but the open division. We're going to talk a little bit about that later. And today we are going to do a chest and shoulder workout. Let's go. I'm stoked I get to work out with pro bodybuilding Hall of Fame Lee Labrada. What's interesting is that uh, Gene and I typically work out together on the weekend, so we thought it'd be cool to share with everybody what one of our typical workouts looks like. So typically, uh, typically the movements are broken up into presses and flies of some type. You know, presses obviously do the uh, pectorals, but they also involve the shoulders and the tricep to a degree. Flies, we try to isolate the pecs. We'll go to those in just a little bit. And the idea there is to not incorporate the uh, the tricep and, and as uh, much, you know, so basically it's kind of like a uh, hugging movement, like an arching movement. All right, get a little bit of a warm up here. All right, man, I got the uh, the oversized microphone going on today. With all of the stuff that you have in the uh, press lately with the uh, tech devices, it kind of looks like it could run some electrodes into my head here and we would be uh, just kind of remote controlling Lee Labrada through the, the exercises, you know? Gene, you know what's really cool about this exercise while you're doing it? You know, my pecs on your shirt are just kind of flexing here. The uh, <laughs> see, see this cool shirt that he's that, yeah. see the cool shirt he's got on. Yeah, I was just saying as he's flexing, my pecs are flexing too. Guaranteed to give you ten percent extra on your PRs. <laughs> the machine's a lot better than I like uh, doing the uh, free weight bench press. The traditional forty-five pound Olympic bar these days. I had a friend of mine this week that literally had a uh, tear. In, in a peck and he's been doing those bench presses forever but they're notorious for causing a peck tear so what i tell guys as they cross 40 years old they start getting a little bit older is stay away from the free weight bench presses and rely on the machines they're a lot better for you in terms of uh, limiting the uh, potential for injury Feel strong today, man. You guys be sure to watch a video that I just put out here recently called uh, End Range, you know, which is avoiding injury in the end range of exercises. You know, end range being either at the bottom, like for the bench press, at the bottom of the bench press or at the top of the bench press. But typically what happens is that uh, the uh, the area where you're, or the time that you're most vulnerable in the bench press is when that peg is completely stretched, which is at the bottom and you come down and you reverse direction that's the moment of greatest stress. That's typically when people have tears. So be careful, you gotta do them slow. She's stronger than I am. Because of the shirt. It's the shirt, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, it's the shirt. Yeah, me be when I was, you know, maybe eight or nine years old, but. <laughs> I'm 11 years older than he is. So it kind of puts it in perspective. Yeah, maybe when, maybe when I was 20 and you were nine, huh? But um, no, it's all uh, like the last, uh, I mean, I'd say the last 20 years, we've been pretty evenly matched on strength, you know? So we'll get together on the weekends. We'll train, typically legs. We'll train legs on the weekend. And man, it's good. Speaking of which, I did them yesterday. It's like I really felt it this morning. Yep. Yep. All right, 
how many times, because you're a personal trainer, okay, how many times have you been in the gym and you've seen somebody on a bench press on an Olympic bar and his buddy gets up over him and the buddy ends up doing upright, okay, rows. upright rows. Yeah, because the guy, the guy puts more weight on there than he can even handle and his partner's up there doing upright rows. Yeah. Ego lifting, right? Oh, it's been, yeah. Yeah. I see quite a bit. So we're going at a pretty good cadence, you know, long enough to allow each other to do our set, but pretty much we, we jump on it right after that. If you're training by yourself, you want to rest long enough to catch your breath. You know, you'll notice that he's got a very fluid style uh, when he does his reps, you know, really not pausing too long at the bottom nor locking out and holding it at the top. You know, we, you know, and this is typical of my style as well. You know, it's just a very fluid, continuous tension kind of style on all of the exercise, keeping the tension on the muscle, but keeping it moving. Let me work for it. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> oh, okay. Solid. Woo, yeah, man. Felt that one. I'm gonna feel that one tomorrow too. <laughs> I feel it right now. <laughs> hey, you wake up in the morning like this. <laughs> Dude, that, I love that guy. I love that guy. The guy with the RTD hat. We need to commercialize those. RTD hats, guys. <laughs> I'd buy one. <laughs> so I'd buy one. <laughs> you know, and afterwards, after you finish working out, you just trade them put for beers. <laughs> yeah, put the beers in there, you know? All right, Gene. Good. Good. Yeah, bud. Yeah, buddy. Let's go. Come on, come on, come on. That's you. That's you. Yeah. One more. One more. Let's go. Come on. Drive. Drive. Good. Nice. Runs in the family, man. They don't call him Gene for anything. It's because he's got the genetics. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, buddy, come on. Come on, come on, come on, one more. Drive, 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 drive. Good. Nice. All right, man. Get a sip of water and then let's go uh, do some flies. Just two shows, yeah. Just two shows. The first one, I was uh, 19. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, uh. It's a long off season. Yeah, 28 years, actually. <laughs> 28 years. Eight it was years. a lot of fun, though. You know, it, uh. You know, growing up under Lee's shadow, you know, I wanted to wanted to kind of compete, but just that little voice in my head, the little negative voice in my head just kind of, you know, was telling me, uh, just giving me all the negative input, telling me why I couldn't and shouldn't compete. And then uh, about four, four or five years ago, uh, in Lee's kitchen, we got to talking and it was uh, one of these things where we, uh, came up with a decision kind of like, you know, for the longest time of kind of just allowing my fear to keep me bottled. <clears throat> and then uh, we made the decision to, uh, to do the show. And at that point, that was just a, a real groundbreaking uh, moment because it was almost as, uh, as if I had my back against the wall and there was just no other direction to move but forward. That's well, that's well put. And, and you know what, that, that was, uh... That was a decision that you made, but you put the work in. You decided to put one foot in front of the next and keep moving forward, you know, and uh, you started, which is um, something that a lot of people, they fail to do. You know, they, they develop plans, but they don't start, and more importantly, they don't finish. You know, but when uh, when you have that uh, that goal in mind and you are taking action, taking steps towards it, Day after day, you know, burning the boat, so to speak. You call it putting your back against the uh, yeah. against the wall. I call it burning the boats. Basically, uh, landing you know, on shore, land, the boats landing on not. shore, and burning the boats. Because guess what? We're going to go into this battle, and we're either going to get our asses kicked, but we're not swimming back. We're not going back. You know, we're going to get our asses kicked, or we're going to win. You know, dude, you killed it. It wasn't even, wasn't even close. 
Yeah. Well, had, had a yeah, good we'll show, we'll show had a good corner, man. Yeah. <laughs> his symmetry and his proportion is fantastic. You know, muscle bellies. He's got, he's got the whole package. He did a, an amazing job at, at the branch. I think people were like just super surprised because he went in to the master's category and then he turns around and goes into the open category and it ends up beating guys that are half his age literally on that same night and wins the, the whole thing. You know, needless to say, we were all smiles. Right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, man, let's go do some flies. You know what, though? The important thing is uh, he did it, and he kept developing his body during that time, you know? And, you know, of course, uh, you get busy with work, you know, in his career as a personal trainer. You know, his clients are important, you know, so he's giving it up for them. But at the same time, he kept developing his body. And, you know, it, it really cuts back to, you know, what I've always said, that bodybuilding is about the journey. You know, it's not about the destination. Yeah, we win some titles along the way, right? And that type of thing, hopefully, you know, if we compete, you know, uh, but even if we don't win the titles, you know, we have the experience of the competition and most importantly, the battle against ourselves every day that we train right here in the gym as we're battling the weights and we're battling to see just how good we can make our bodies. That's what it's all about, it's the journey. So a little bit of a warm up here in this one. So typically uh, when we switch exercises, we'll do one set of that exercise. First set is a warm up set just to get the uh, muscles ready for that particular range and force curve of the exercise. All right. Good. You know, while, while I'm stacking uh, stacking this up a little bit for the for the first working set, I'm just make mention that uh, you know bodybuilding is something that really runs in the family. Uh, Gene's an obvious example. He's you know he's an amazing bodybuilder, but uh, we have two sisters, and uh, both of those sisters uh, were bodybuilding champions in their youth. Uh, having won the likes of Miss Texas um, and um, uh, one sister at 18 years of age with six months of training won the Miss Texas and then turned around and took fourth in the USA's with six months of training at 18 years old. So uh, those are the type of genetics that run in our family. I'm hoping I might be able to pull them into one of the workouts one of these days. Yep. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Oh my. Nice. Yes. Okay, here we go. All right. Whew. All right, man. If you're a former athlete or bodybuilding competitor like me, you know, uh, you know, because I've been competing since I was 18 years old, you know, as you get older, you have to take into account the limitations, some of the limitations that come with age, and a lot of those can be overcome here, right, with, with the mind, but you have to recognize that there's gonna be some limitations. Let me give Gene a spot here real quick and I'll continue. Yeah, bud. Okay. All right, good. And so, what ends up happening is that you have to shift from all or nothing, because let's face it, you know, when we were competitive athletes uh, competing in, in the Mr. Olympia, um, you know, it's, you have two speeds, it's zero or 100 miles an hour, you know, and you come into the gym and you're totally focused and you're going hundred miles an hour and it's just total effort. You know, as you get older, uh, you know, you have to downshift and you have to work around some limitations. Some of you guys may have issues with a joint problem. You know, I've got two training partners that have had knee replacements and hip replacements, you know, old training partners. It happens, you know, we get wear and tear on the joints as we get older. So you have to work around those things. You have to be smart and you have to use exercises that don't hurt your joints. So just keep that in mind if, uh, if you're a little bit older like I am. Yep. Get him. Right. Oh, 
One more, one more, one more. Let's go. Bring it, bring it. Make me work, make me work. Yes. Mm. Okay, good. Let's do it. Yeah, bud. Come on, let's go. All right, here we go. Here we go. Okay, come on. Yeah, Gene. Yeah. Good. One more. Drive. 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 There it is. Good. Come on. Him. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Again, come on. Yes. Get it. Work. Yes. Got it. All right. Yeah, man. I'll be walking around like a T-Rex tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> So that does it for chest. That's that's it for today for chest. And then what we're gonna do uh, next, we're gonna do some shoulder work. And that's gonna be broken down into two general exercise movements. movements, And uh, those are number one, laterals, side laterals, and number two, presses. So we're gonna start with this uh, side lateral machine over here, and then we're gonna go do some presses. Sounds good. All right. So we're gonna start with the lateral machine. This is a, a prime machine, which you guys by now probably already know that I like a lot uh, because of the fact that it can uh, vary the force curve depending on where you put the pin on the cam. Yeah, it's got a lot of adjustments and such, but if you don't have access to a, a lateral machine like this one, don't sweat it. You can always use the dumbbells. I did for many years, they're awesome. So let's get started with a lateral movement here. Notice Lee's form here. He's, he's doing excellent form. He's keeping the traps minimally activated, really pushing out into the elbows as if he's trying to expand the shoulders. And obviously the pads are coming up. Excellent. And the uh, the push comes from here. So I try to try to relax the hand and just push from there. So what do you like better between uh, like a side lateral machine like this and the uh, free weight side laterals and, and why? Do you have a preference? You know what, I actually, actually I like a side lateral machine usually, yeah. depending on the make, uh, a little bit more than a standing free weight mm -hmm. dumbbell side lateral. And I, I think it's essentially uh, kind of to expand what you were talking about, the force curve. Yeah. To keep tension on the muscle, uh, obviously when you're doing a a dumbbell side lateral, you have no tension in the deltoids from this position at yeah, all. Yeah, if it's a dumbbell, right? If it's a dumbbell. Yeah, there's there's not much resistance there right. until you start coming it starts, up. And then when yeah, you're about gravity takes place. Yes. Yeah. 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 And then whereas you know the machine because of the force curve and the uh, the internal direction, mm -hmm. you are you have resistance through even in that bottom right bottom so states you have tension going against the arm, so you have to push against. So those that don't have one of these, they could conceivably get a lot out of doing the side lateral one hand at a time or one arm at a time using a cable, a low cable Absolutely. mechanism. Absolutely. You know, so you know, you'd have the handle attached to the uh, cable and you would just take the cable and you you guys have probably seen these, you know, where you just come up one at a time, but the benefit there is that it keeps continuous tension on that shoulder muscle right from the beginning of the movement. Here we go. Come on, bro. Come on. Oh, there it is. Good. 
Nice, nice set. All right, so let's go do some, uh, let's go do some presses. All right, so next exercise that we're gonna do is uh, the overhead press. This is a machine press that, that we're loading up here. So Gene, some pointers for everybody that's watching on these. So what are some do's and don'ts? I'm gonna listen to his do's and don'ts before I start so that I don't accidentally do one of the don'ts. <laughs> Um, well, when you're doing a, a machine press or really any other type of press, um, you know, we like to concern ourselves with range of motion of the shoulder. Right. right. Um, so it, the general advice is to kind of make sure that the elbows don't dip past, uh, too far down so, past so, the shoulder. So technically this is a little too low. Yes. Yes. For, for, your, for your normal lay person. But because you've been at it for quite a while and you actually have very good flexibility but in let me the tell shoulders. You, but let me tell you, see, I love it. I love it when he says this stuff because any time that I can adjust a seat to make myself adjusted to the bigger people proportions, I like that. So I, I like dropping the seat. <laughs> a little bit more? Is, that, is that good right there? Okay, and then the, the range of motion all the way up to here. I like to go short, short of lockout, right? Short of lockout. Yeah, right. I think just so those last if, two inches are more tricep than anything. Right, so so if this is lockout, that takes the pressure off the shoulder, throws it on your tricep and your joints, so just short of lockout, right? Correct. Okay, so from here to right there. Okay, and then just continuous tension? Absolutely. Okay, here we go. Keyword, continuous tension. The muscle doesn't know poundage doesn't know weight right it knows tension right so he can actually create intramuscular tension on his own without really having to go heavier so he can actually create the the stress response that he wants elicit the response within the muscle without really having to load too heavy and uh you know cause joint uh or connective tissue damage so to use the old adage it's not the size of the tool it's how you use it amen amen good there's one thing I learned from Lee at a very early age, it was proper warm up. And uh, it has lent itself, it has kept me from many an injury, whereas I've had many training partners that uh, wanted to get into their working poundages as quick as possible. Yeah. They've, they've all had injuries and muscle tears and, yeah. you know, I've just kind of stuck with what you've always taught me and that's, you know, have a few pre-leading sets before you get into those top working sets. Absolutely. Don't get in a hurry. You know what, honestly, uh, your, your shoulder is a very pliable muscle. Um, so in terms of stretching it, I don't think you're going to get deep enough to elicit like a stretch or a stretch response like you would with something like a quadricep. Um, however, I think you kind of uh, open yourself up for more injury whenever you're going to those really deep stretch positions. I think it's more important to uh, maintain tension because you will get to a point to where you kind of lose tension and then there's postural deviations and you just end up losing the focus on your deltoid, which if this is that, if that's what you're doing, then you know, that's uh, kind of what you want to kind of keep your emphasis on the on the delts and get them fatigued as quick as possible. Good, Gene. Come on. Good. Yeah, buddy. Okay. So looking better as you get older is to wear tighter t-shirts. <laughs> feel this one a little bit so yeah yeah okay that's another uh, important thing to kind of point out is you know while you're training i think it's common to feel little little dings maybe little twinges yeah you gotta and you, you have to you really those. listen to your body you gotta listen to them you know or at least uh yeah it's funny because a lot of times gene points out a good something uh to, to a really good point you know is that uh sometimes injuries give warnings you know, I still remember, you know, getting ready for the Mr. Olympia one year back in the late 80s. And I was doing, uh, I was doing lunges with a weight. And I came down on a lunge and I felt a little twinge, right? I felt a little twinge in my hamstring. And I said, I'm just going to ignore it. That's nothing, right? It's like two reps later, 
you, you know, you feel like that zipper, zip, like that, you know, and you know that you strained something. And you just drop the weight, and, yeah, and of course, you know, it's, uh, it's strained at that point. You know, so uh, your, your, uh, your body will typically give you warning shots. You know, don't ignore them. Good, Gene, come on. Yeah, all right, come on, come on. Yeah. Okay, there we go, good. Let's do it. All right, let's go, let's go. Drive. Okay, good. Lights out. Lights out, right? <laughs> yeah, man. One more, one more, come on. Let's go. Two. One more. Sweet. Oh, yeah. Good. There's a reason they call these skull crushers, right? That's right. What happens if you slip? Yeah. Have you ever bunked yourself in the nose with these? Uh, not the nose, but yeah. I've bunked myself in the forehead one time. One time, and that's all it took. It'll never happen again. Good. Two, one, and two. Drive. Got it. All right, guys. So that wraps it up for today's chest and shoulder workouts with my brother, Gene Labrada branch warren champion and personal trainer extraordinaire check him out if you're in houston make sure you get a session with him and uh, if you guys have any questions or comments be sure to leave them in the uh, comment section below and uh, you know go out there get yourself a, a great workout stay strong stay lean look up get up i'm lee lebron i'll see you next time